slip through during winter time and gone are the reds of the little scarlets to be replaced by well the yellows and oranges of citrus fruits because it's marmalade production. Melanie Humphreys is here with us today. Melanie Talk to me about the factory year on. Okay, uh, if we start at this time of year, January through to March, then we're looking at fresh oranges. Uh, we get all our fresh oranges, they're all Seville bitters. And we have two or three suppliers that we've used for probably the last 40 years, still using the same people. Um, we buy the fresh oranges straight from Seville. We use a portion of them as fresh fruit um, from which we make the jelly marmalades. Uh, but the majority we use as a whole orange, which we cook, first of all, in very large stainless steel tanks. Um, the oranges are then separated by hand in our fruit sorting area, so that the centre of the orange with the pips is removed from the peel. Uh, the peel is then just sliced up, and the centre of the orange is separated from the pips and horrible bits um, by a sieving system. Um, the two parts are then put back together, and that's the traditional English marmalade. Um, the, the faction of jelly marmalade is a slightly more delicate type of marmalade, without any fruit content, it's just the juice of the orange, with a tiny little piece of orange peel in. Um, that's basically the orange season, which lasts for three, three, three and a half months. Uh, it takes us to March. At that point we start to make Christmas puddings. And that goes on for the rest of the year, until well, until probably November, December. Um, in June, we start the next fresh fruit season, which is strawberry. Again, we always use fresh strawberries from our farm and from local farms, making the, the whole of the year's requirement from fresh fruit, because we think it's better than freezing strawberries. They don't freeze very well. Um, so that takes probably six weeks, maybe four to six weeks. Then we go on to plums in September. Uh, Victoria plums, damsons, green gauges, things like that. Um, finish off with strange little things like medlars and quinces and then we're back to December. All the other fruits we tend to use frozen and we can fit them in throughout the year whenever we have a little gap, whenever we're not doing a fresh season. Well today we've seen marmalade produced with a grapefruit marmalade and the grapefruits, where do they come from? These are Cypriots. Uh, we can, they are bought from other parts of the world but we always use Cypriot grapefruits, white marsh, particular variety. And how do they come in? Do you have a lorry load or are they de how are they delivered to you? They are. We have a cold container. This particular instance for the grapefruits is actually a very small part of our marmalade range, but we had a whole container of fresh grapefruits. And then we go through the same, same process rather as we do for the um, pulpy, thick marmalades, cooking them whole. Um, so effectively they're cooked twice. OK then, Melanie. How do you make grapefruit marmalade here at Tiptree? We'll bring the fruit in unwaxed show that the surface of the fruit hasn't been treated in any way. We unload the fruit from the cardboard boxes into stainless mesh trays, which we then put into the large stainless steel tanks, and fill with water and simmer for two and a half hours, which makes the fruit lovely and soft and it imparts the flavour of the peel through the whole fruit. We then let the fruit cool down um, and the fruits removed and taken into the fruit sorting area where the peel and pulp, what we call the pulp, the centre part of the fruit, is removed by hand. The ladies will take the cool fruit um, into small plastic trays, they'll cut off the, the calyx of the fruit and then break open the, the whole fruit with their hands. It's, it, by this stage it's quite fragile. Um, and then by hand they take the centre part of the fruit, scoop the centre part away with their fingers um, to pass the peel onto a different sort of sorting belt to be sliced into the right size and shaped peel. different types of cutters, two different sizes for that type of marmalade process. One is about six millimetres and one is about eight millimetres for the chunky marmalade.
centre part then goes out of the crate room into um, a sort of another processing area um, where it goes through a sieve mechanism to remove the pips. Once the fruit's been separated and processed in the right way, we take the two fractions to the boiling room um, where they're put together again in the boiling pan with syrup and any other thing that you might need. In some cases we need pectin to help it set. Um, and they're all cooked together to produce the actual jam or marmalade. Once all the ingredients are together in the boiling pan, it will probably take about 10 minutes per pan before the next load of fruit will be loaded in. So we're cooking it about 10 minutes for 107 degrees centigrade, something like that. From the boiling room, once the jam's all been cooked, uh, it's pumped through to the filling room, where again it's uh, kept moving to keep it uh, so that it doesn't start to set and kept hot, so it keeps uh, fluid. Uh, it drops by gravity into the filling head, where the jars are fed into underneath the filling head. The, fill the jars are filled volumetrically, uh, pass immediately through a metal detector and a cupping uh, machine. At that point, there are our units. Uh, once they're capped, um, we're sure that the caps are on properly, we pass the jars along the line for a short time to, part, to then invert them completely. So they travel along the line on their caps for two and a half minutes. And this is just to sterilise the airspace, which is inevitably in the jar. the jars are re-inverted, we go through a cooling apparatus just to bring the temperature down and stop them cooking.
it generally we don't label straight away. We store the product unlabeled in the warehouse uh, so that we know that it's okay before we label it. That's the main reason because we test every product the next day before we release it for sale. Once it has been released for sale and the orders are coming through, then it will go through to the labelling room where the right sort of label with the right code information will go onto the jar. That's it, yes, it's just uh, different types of pack, home trade packs, six jars with shrink wrap, some export orders of 12 jars in a box, all sorts of different configurations of the same thing. We have, I think there's eight or nine orange-based marmalades, then we have lime, lemon, grapefruit, three fruits, and there's uh, orange and uh, ginger, things like that. Uh, well, last year we launched 11 new uh, savoury products, chutneys and relishes, which have gone very well. Um, we're looking, always looking at new things, but um, we've got such a large range already um, that we don't, we find that if we introduce a new product we generally have to get rid of an old one, which we don't want to do particularly. But maybe looking at lower sugar products, things like that, just to appeal to younger markets, maybe this year. Mm -hmm.